lot of the work that we do at the Autonomy Project focuses on decision making, particularly in ethically or existentially fraught situations. That might involve vulnerable people or end of life situations or both. One of our key partners in that work for over a decade now has been this amazing hospice that we have here in Colchester, St. Helena Hospice. During the pandemic, we really started working with them on what are called DNA CPR recommendations. That stands for do not attempt CPR. There was a lot of concern about that during the pandemic. There was a Care Quality Commission report and it called for more research, more guidance, more training in that area. So we did a lot of work in that field. And what we found, first of all, was a lot of misunderstanding. There's a lot of public misunderstanding about even what CPR is, how effective it is what a DNA CPR recommendation is. Among care professionals, there was a lot of misunderstanding about that. So we did that research, we worked with our partners at the hospice and elsewhere, and when we published that research, we really then began to work with regional directors of end-of-life care in the NHS, who really started to change the way they were approaching end-of-life care planning. This work that Professor Martin has done with his team has been really helpful to shine a light on the practice that we have um, at End of Life. The particular paper that was started around decisions around CPR was really useful at the end of the first wave of the pandemic to really focus what is the quality of care that we're offering to some of the most vulnerable people in our society. What are the ethical judgments that are being made? Uh, and we need to reflect on that. We need to call ourselves to account and then for leaders in systems like myself or in organisations, we need to then weigh up. Does our practice match the higher standard? What is it that we're offering? And then if we find that there are gaps or areas where we think we're not performing in a way or making decisions with the right level of a reflection, then we can improve that. We can respond to that with how we're delivering our education and training, really making sure that we keep and what is best for these vulnerable people at the heart of, of the practice that we deliver. Patients benefit by having better conversations with their clinicians. So what we're seeing in this rollout of the RESPECT process is that the conversations that clinicians are having with people approaching the end of life are more holistic. They're getting a chance to share what's important to them and what they would like to experience in the way of care, as well as what they wouldn't like to experience and the do not attempt resuscitation discussion is embedded in a much broader and more holistic conversation.